Hi everyone, uh, this is a brief overview of my poster on seismic wave field and travel time modeling using machine learned functions. So one of the problems that we face in, in seismic inversion is that we need to do a lot of forward modeling, which lies at the heart of all inversion algorithms. And oftentimes these inversion algorithms are bottlenecked uh, by the need to do repeated modeling for perturbations in the velocity model and source location. So even if we have a slightly different velocity model, we need to do or spend the same amount of computational effort. And therefore there is no transfer from information between one simulation and then and the next, which is what we try to address here by using the emerging paradigm of physics informed neural networks to solve the Iconal and Helmholtz equations for computing travel time and wave field solutions. So the idea over here is that uh, we embed the, the residual of the underlying partial differential equation as a loss function to guide the training of the neural network. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit. Um, so the input of this neural network are the spatial locations from your computational domain, and the output is the corresponding wave field solution or the travel time solution at that location. Um, so therefore, we are hoping that we could train a neural network to approximate a function that gives us the mapping between the input coordinates and uh, the, the field that we are looking to solve for. And uh, to do this, uh, we train a neural network based on a bunch of collocation or training points, which are generally randomly chosen. Uh, what are the advantages of doing so? So the proposed approach makes it extremely easy to solve uh, very complex equations. So if you want to solve uh, by incorporating a lot of physics, such as adding an isotropy attenuation, it's essentially the same as solving the isotropic case because you just need to uh, replace the loss function by the corresponding uh, residual uh, of from the PDE. Um, so for example, uh, it takes a, a lot of effort in, uh, compared to solving the isotropic iconal equation and solving the anisotropic or the orthorhombic iconal equation. But in this case, it becomes very easy because you just replace the isotropic iconal equation based residual with the orthorhombic iconal equation based residual and, and similarly for the Helmholtz equation. The algorithm is mesh free and therefore can easily account for surface topography or sharply varying uh, features in your velocity model. Uh, and through transfer learning and surrogate modeling, computational efficiency can be massively increased. And this provides us uh, with a mechanism to, uh, to transfer this information that we have gained in solving uh, a problem for a particular velocity model and source location to a new problem. Uh, moreover, it allows for easy deployment of computations across a variety of platforms. So whether it's a, you are, you're using a CPU or a GPU, the same TensorFlow code uh, will be used because it's based on computational graphs. Uh, so just a little bit about the theory. So essentially what we, uh, so this, uh, what you see here is the factored iconal equation. So we find that instead of solving the regular iconal equation, it's better to solve the factored iconal equation because then you don't have to deal with a point source singularity and you embed that into the loss function along with a couple of additional terms that enforces the positivity of the solution and the boundary condition. And then you try to, uh, to minimize uh, this function or a bunch of collocation points and you're looking for the parameters of your neural network, such as the weights and biases that uh, minimize this function. Similarly, for the Helmholtz equation, uh, what we do here is we use the Lippmann-Schwinger form of the equation, and uh, instead of solving for the for the um, wave field solution, what we are doing here is we are solving for the scattered wave field. So therefore, we have a, a background wave field that we compute analytically, and on top of that, we compute the scattered wave field using the physics informed neural network. Again, in a similar way, we form the loss function form by the residual of this uh, scattered uh, wave field uh, based equation. Uh, a bit of, let's say, uh, workflow here for, which is you know, based on the iconal equation as an example. So what we do is we input or uh, feed in a bunch of collocation points, X star, Z star, now your neural network in the beginning would be randomly initialized and therefore it will spit out some garbage uh, travel times and that will not be the correct solution of course. And therefore you have to minimize, uh, minimize uh, the loss function with respect to network parameters. And here comes uh, other parameters such as the velocity and the gradient of um, the known travel time part because we're using the factored iconal equation. So you know, you're asking your neural network to go back, update the weights until uh, it reach, reaches to the point that the output it spits out 
satisfies the underlying uh, econal equation. And once you have that, it's called a trained neural network. And then you feed uh, grid points corresponding to a regular grid, which gives you the unknown travel time part tau, which you multiply with T0 to get uh, capital T. And similarly, uh, similarly, the procedure is the same for the Helmholtz equation. Uh, a few test results. So here we have V of Z velocity model with the source in the center. And uh, what we compare here, uh, our solution against is the fast marching solution, which you see here. And, uh, and here is a solution with pins. So what you see here are absolute travel time errors, which go up to uh, 10 millisecond in the case of uh, fast marching method, whereas uh, the errors are, are considerably less and, and kind of randomly distributed for the physics informed neural network. So the approach works. Now, what can uh, we do? Now we change the velocity model and the source location. So now we introduce a horizontal gradient here uh, compared to the previous case, change the source location. Now we ask the question, can we start with the model that we trained previously, the neural network model, uh, so instead of training from scratch, can we use transfer learning? And that is exactly what we do here. And this um, <clears throat> convergence curve shows that if we were to start with a randomly initialized model, it would take us uh, a lot of epochs to converge, whereas with a pre-trained initial model, uh, we could converge much faster and therefore we could speed up our computations or utilize that information we gained by solving the first problem. Uh, and the solution accuracy that we get is not compromised. It, we still uh, get very good accuracy, which is shown here for the physics informed neural network, whereas this is the corresponding one for the uh, fast marching method. Uh, the next thing we show here is something what is called surrogate modeling. So once you have solutions for a bunch of training of a bunch of source locations, so we show here 16 source locations. Let's say you start with the first source location, compute the solution with a random initialized model, and then for the rest of those source locations, you compute using transfer learning, which means you know you speed up computations. But then once you have enough uh, solutions, what you can do is you can add source locations at the input and also kind of uh, train the neural network to learn this mapping between the source location and the corresponding solution wave field. So that is what we do here. And from that point on, what happens, it just becomes an analytical solver, your neural network, because then you don't need any new training. Uh, you just need a single evaluation of the neural network for any new source location. So this is particularly interesting for micro seismic source localization studies, where you have to do this task for um, several hundred or thousands of uh, candidate source locations. And therefore, if you do it for you know, 10, 20 sources, and then you can uh, massively speed up computation. Here are the errors for the fast marching method for a randomly uh, located source after the training has been done. And here is the solution for the uh, physics informed neural network based method, which is, uh, so this is done without any training, only with a single evaluation of the surrogate model. Uh, similarly with the Helmholtz solvers, so we have two anomalies here in this model, and we are trying to predict the, the scattered wave field here is uh, what we have the difference between the actual and predicted scattered wave field for real part of the eight hertz wave field solution, which shows that there are some minor errors and similarly for the imaginary part, uh, but overall uh, the accuracy is pretty good. Uh, here is a 3D part of the over thrust model, a bit smoothed here, and this is the solution that we get um, for the for the real part for 10 hertz wave field uh, as, as shown here. And here is the corresponding solution using the Helmholtz solver. So this is uh, using traditional Helmholtz solver and this is using physics and neural network based solution. And there is the error. So we see some errors uh, here, particularly in, and this comes from sharp features in your velocity model. So while we may see some errors uh, cropping up here, but I think this is a nice approach because uh, eventually what we want uh, is smooth updates um, uh, from our wave field inversion methods, at least in the initial phases of the velocity building solution. And therefore this method can be used at that stage reliably. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to share about my presentation. Thank you for your attention.